What's going on guys, Jerry Neutron here back with a brand new video and today we're going to take a look at a couple CPU coolers from a company by the name of Reven. If you guys haven't heard of them before, they are owned by the Scythe Group, so the same parent company that makes the Scythe Mugen and Scythe Ninja coolers, if you guys are familiar with those. But the Reven brand focuses more on high-end products instead of mid-range ones, and that's kind of the difference between the two. But anyway, they sent me these two coolers, this larger a single tower cooler with a 140 millimeter fan called the Aranos, and another single tower cooler but with a 120 millimeter fan named the Hans. This one might possibly be a Hyper 212 Evo killer, but we'll have to wait and see once I get it installed. Now first things first, both coolers work with all modern Intel and AMD sockets, so LGA 1151, 1150, 1155, 2011 V3. Uh, on the AMD side, you have AM3 Plus and FM2 Plus. So if you built the system within the last five years, uh, chances are you're probably covered. Taking a look at the Hans cooler, you can see it comes with a single 120 millimeter black and yellow fan. Not my favorite color combination, but it doesn't look bad either. You just kind of have to coordinate with the rest of your build. Now the fan is held on by these wire clips on each side. I personally like the plastic brackets from the Hyper 212 Evo a little bit better. But these may give you slightly more freedom when it comes to your fan mounting. Aside from that, there's an aluminum top plate with the Reven branding, uh, a Brady cable for the PWM fan wiring, four nickel plated 6mm heat pipes, and a polished copper base. On the Aranos cooler, you get a 140mm fan with the Reven branding on the outer edges, a similar aluminum top plate which gives the cooler a premium look, a Brady cable, an optional low noise adapter, six nickel plated heat pipes, two which are eight millimeters, the rest are six millimeters, and a polished copper base. You'll also notice the heat pipes and base are slightly offset, and that's to allow for additional RAM clearance on the fan side, which I think is a nice touch. Uh, personally, this is my preferred type of cooler. I like the slightly larger 140 millimeter fan to keep noise low. And the slightly larger tower, if it'll fit inside your case, should allow for slightly better cooling. And lastly, both coolers include all of the hardware needed for installation, including thermal paste. But for some reason they package it in a small plastic bag instead of a tube, which I'm actually not a fan of because that makes reusing the paste more messy. But that's about it as far as the coolers go physically. So let's go ahead and get these installed and see how they perform. Of course we'll be comparing these to the Hyper 212 Evo being that it's the most popular cooler and it should give you guys a pretty good idea of how these perform in comparison to the cooler that you're probably running while watching this video. So first up is the Hans cooler. Uh, installation wasn't too bad here. You essentially install the back plate, install the two brackets on the front side of the motherboard, thermal paste, and then the fan. Now unlike the Hyper 212 Evo, the Hans cooler does not block any RAM slots, so you have no restrictions on RAM height, which is nice. It's also a slightly shorter cooler at 155 millimeters tall compared to 159, so most cases should be able to accommodate for its size. As for noise, here's how the cooler sounds at idle and full speed. Now moving on to the Aranos, installation was actually the same for both coolers. Neither one had screws that were hard to reach, so I was able to install both without removing the motherboard from my case. Uh, this cooler is a little bit taller at 161 millimeters, so make sure you have proper clearance to install it in your rig. Unfortunately, it does not fit in the Pandora ATX, so we'll be testing all of these coolers with the side panel off. However, given the size of the Aranos, I was impressed with the amount of RAM clearance you get. Like the Hans cooler, you have very little restrictions in regards to your RAM choice. Now for acoustics, here's how the Arano sounds at idle and then at full speed. All right, so with all that stuff out of the way, uh, we can finally get down to how these two coolers perform. My test system is running an i7-4790K at 4.5 gigahertz on 1.25 volts. Ambient temp is 27 degrees Celsius, and once again, all coolers are being tested with the side panel off and at full fan speed.
So as you can see, the Aranos performed the best overall, beating out the other three coolers, including my Dark Rock TF, which I normally run in this system. It's not a tower cooler itself, but I wanted to see how it would fare in comparison to these two Reven coolers. The Hans cooler only slightly outperformed the Hyper 212 Evo, but did so at a much lower fan RPM, meaning the system performed similarly while being noticeably quieter, which is a plus. In terms of noise, the Hyper 212 Evo was the loudest, followed by the Hans cooler, then the Aranos, with the Dark Rock TF being the quietest. Also, before I forget to mention it, build quality was solid on both Reven coolers, um, not quite to the level of Noctua or Be Quiet, but more than adequate, so no complaints from me there. So that's about it, guys. The Hans Cooler looks like a worthy Hyper 212 Evo alternative, assuming the pricing is competitive, and the Aranos offers even better cooling for less than 50 bucks. Now all they have to do is convince people to install a big yellow fan in their system. So let me know what you guys think about these coolers down below. Comment mellow yellow if you made it this far. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed this type of content. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, see ya. So I was taking a break from doing some benchmarking and I started thinking about my mechanical keyboards and uh, kind of how my collection has grown over time.